Meld that. Stun it. Oh my god, 235. Look at these hits. Oh, what the fuck is this? What the fuck? 419 thou? Bro, how's that not hit? Can't follow me. I'm in moon kid form. Big damn. He's so fucked. Oh my golly dang. That's the nice thing about that a fucking Starfire. It's a different school. Spamming the rats. What is up everybody? Today was a fabulous day. Wrestle Druid damage has been severely buffed and we have returned. It's time to get off the pillar and log back on that druid because we can actually do damage now. This is just so exciting. <clears throat> Woo! All right. So we're going to explain what to do, how to do the dam, what's going on, and how to get it done. All right. So let's explain what happened. 50% Starfire buff, 50% Wrath buff, 80% Moonfire buff, big freaking damn. All right. So I'm going to explain. I played all day yesterday, gaming it up, trying out different builds, trying different styles out. And I got a good idea, I think, of how to run it in twos, threes, slash shuffle. And I'm going to explain everything I've learned so far. All right. So let's get into it. First thing, what did I do with my stats? Because I did change my stats very slightly here. The one thing that I did is I dropped my vers my haste and I added versatility. All right, I dropped a, I was originally running around 30 to 35% haste. I now dropped it down to 20, okay? And I put that all into verse. I still have a good amount of mastery. My mastery maybe suffered just a very slight bit, but um, I did chunk up my verse. So right now in PvP, this is with the zone of focus, so the one embellishment. My stats are 22 haste in human form, 23 mastery, 47 verse, all right? So a lot more versatility. The reason I did that is this is not Disc Priest. I can't just sit there and spam damage all game. So haste is not going to be as beneficial for me. Um, so I opted for more verse because the way that the rest of Druid damage is going to work now, which I think is a great idea, is to find pockets of opportunity and you're going to execute. You see a target low, swap Moonkin form, throw a couple star fires, maybe a star surge or a wrath. You're in tree form, throw some instant uh, wraths out there. Find a pocket, take down the enemy, execute victory success got it good so versatility will be better in those scenarios because you're going to get a lot more damage in there typically people run 30 percent maybe around give or take on wrestle druid because they want more haste and mastery but think about this in a scenario like that i have 17 percent more let's say let's say give or take 20 percent more verse in a window where i'm throwing out three star fires star fires hit for about 250k 20 percent more than that is 550,000. If I throw three of those out, that's 150,000 more damage that I just got in that window than you. That could be the difference of a kill and not a kill. And if those crit, forget about it. All right? So that's why I ran verse, and that's why I'm running it. Now you know. When it comes to talents, two builds that I have currently, one is for twos, one is for threes. There are some talents I do shift around. They are not set in stone. Uh, let me just be clear about that. Okay? You don't want to just copy pasta this. Please know things that do change. So in this twos build, I do opt to stick with some of the feral talents. Um, I do kind of swap around between Typhoon and Mame, depending on the comp that I'm playing. But in general, I say probably play Typhoon. Um, and the reason I have these talents is because Rake Stun is really more, a lot more impactful than threes. And having movement speed is really impactful as well, okay? Especially when you're trying to kite and get away so that you can create space and execute some good damn, okay? Other than that, make sure we have the Boomkin Talents here. I am down one in Astral Recovery, 2% healing. Usually, I don't think it's going to make or break the game. Um, so I did opt to take a point out of that to go into the Typhoon initially. And I also do not have Nature's Cure. If you do need that, you can swap out um, three times. I've been swapped out some nice Vortex, Typhoon, or Natural Recovery, and I'll put it into Nature's Cure. Um, 
you can kind of switch up this build if you'd like as well. Maybe you don't want to play this at all. The other option would be the, the threes build that I have. So threes build difference is I don't take these feral talents at all. So if you are playing with like a sub rogue, for example, you may not need rake. So you might opt to take that out and just play these builds so you have a little bit more tanky stuff. And when you play like this, you do you can still kind of take the nature's cure without having to like lose too much. I still don't have natural recovery just because I opted for Typhoon, but you can kind of mix and match what you'd like. I think it is important to still stick with Heart of the Wild, especially with this damage. Um, and anything else that's important? That's about it. Make sure you have the Moonkin talents. Yeah. So, and then uh, when it comes to the spec side of the tree, the talents that are important here are tree form convoke. So in two v two, I I try I use the op for spirit uh, convoke the spirits because of our in compositions where I can cast. Okay, so if if I'm playing with a rogue and they're constantly locking down the enemy target, I can cat channel these without having to worry about anything. Um, anytime I see a target with pets. Demo locks, unholy decays, BM hunters, convoke is useless. I really hope they change that in the future. Like I, it should work like ultimate penance and it doesn't hit pets. It's kind of ridiculous because there's so many pets in the game, but it is what it is. If you are versing a class with pets, do not play convoke. It's not worth it. Uh, but if you are playing stuff that is locked down and you can cast these, it is worth it. Okay. Reason number one, it, it, it's a lot of damage in a burst window that you can get off and you, and it is pairs very nicely with the one minute cooldown heart of the wild number two it does a lot gives you a lot of mana back okay because when you are in tree form casting wraths you do not get mana back when you're in moon conform casting convoke you do get mana back because of master shapeshifter also do note the buffed wrath from incarnation is 20 percent stronger wraths i believe right just verify that really quick uh should be under wrath right yeah 20 percent stronger wraths when you are in Shapeshifter, it is 30% stronger Wrath. So you are doing more damage in Moonkid form. It is not instant cast, but the damage is more powerful alone. Okay, and it is generating you mana, which could be way, way very beneficial in 2v2. Okay, it's a, definitely a noticeable difference with playing Incarn versus Convoke the Spirits when it comes to uh, mana regen. If you are versing something that could potentially train you in twos, so like a Demon Hunter or a Windwalker or a Feral Druid, stuff like that, don't play Convoke. Play Incarn so that you can be one tankier, two have more healing while getting trained, and three be able to throw out instant damage that's not stoppable. Okay, so if a Demon Hunter is just running at me all game, I can run Incarnation and I can root him instantly, get some space, throw some rats out, whether him or on his enemy or his his, uh, his ally, and do some damage while also getting instant healing and instant roots to create space. Okay, so this is really nice to use offensively in that regard because it also helps you get healing out while doing damage you don't have to shift back and forth between moon conform you're doing increased healing while in uh tree form as well as doing very nice and instant damage all right in threes no question you play in card you don't play convoke okay um that's it so master shape shifter in card or convoke in scenarios and twos okay so that is what it uh, how it works in the talents let's go into the gameplay here so twos versus threes big difference here and you're going to have to experiment to what you can do depending on the compositions you are facing or playing okay whether that's solo shuffle or threes or twos so let's start off with twos in 2v2 two two, you're going to have a lot more opportunity to do damage you're going to be able to put off full rotations it's going to be feel very nice and fun first and foremost this is going to go for both twos and threes Keep up Moonfires, okay? Keep up Moonfires. When in threes, do not overextend for Moonfires, but keep them up. In twos, keep them on both targets, okay? Simple as that. Unless that, unless keeping Moonfire on the healer is going to ruin your CC for your teammate, don't do it. Because like if you're playing with a rogue, you probably don't want to keep it on because it'll break the gouges that he wants to do, okay? But in twos, otherwise, keep up your Moonfires. Plain and simple. Use Adaptive Swarm on cooldown to buff those Moonfires. Plain and simple. And, and... Other than that, you're just going to weave in damage when possible. So I'm going to just going to make a custom group here just so I can see a, a nameplate. All right. So let's say this is my uh, my teammate. I'm standing at a pillar. I'm doing some damn or so I'm doing some heals. I get full hots on myself. I see uh, everybody's chilling. So we have an opportunity. We're going to go moon conform. I typically star surge and then spam star, uh, star fires during heart of the wild. My rule of thumb. When it comes to what to cast, Starfire or Wrath, Starfire is always preferred during Heart of the Wild. 
Reason is, two reasons. There is a little bit of a gap occasionally depending on your haste levels with Wrath. So if I Heart of the Wild here and I spam Wrath, there's a little bit of a hesitation because 0.9 seconds is faster than the global cooldown. So you see how sometimes there's some hesitation, it's not smooth one cast to the next, but Starfire is in that case because it's not faster than the global cooldown. All right, so there is a little bit of a hesitation so you are kind of, I mean, I don't know if I'm not doing the math on this, but it seems like the damage differential is becomes a little bit lessened because of that. And number two, if you get kicked on Arcane School, which is Starfire, you can still heal. Okay, so it's, you're not really killing yourself by just casting. If you get kicked on Starfire, all you do is you shift out and you go back to healing. It's plain and simple. Or if you are doing damage and you get kicked on Starfire, what do you do? You just cast Wrath. Outside of Heart of the Wild, Wrath is going to be more beneficial because Starfire is a little bit slow of a cast. It's more like it's like 2.1 2 or something like that. So Wraths are probably are going to be more beneficial outside of Heart of the Wild. And Star, uh, Starfire is in it. I would still weave in the Star, the Star Surges. I do think they're still worth it because it is instant cast. It does about the same damage as a Wrath or a little more. between. I think it's in between the two. And it does give you that instant mana re, re, uh, return. So I definitely still want to throw in those Star Surges. Um, and then... Other than that, I think that's about it. Tree form, you obviously could just spam, you know, Wrath. Uh, so you're just weaving in the damage between the Star Fires and Star Surges, and it is tough. You're gonna have to get used to it. Priority that I learned, in when especially when it comes to threes, but honestly, kind of in both, is make sure that your blooms are not falling. Okay. So if I'm sitting here casting Star Fires, I'll put a life flow on myself. Um, let's say I, I'm, I'm out here doing damage. I put some moon fires up. I'm ready to do my damn. Go in moonkin form. I'm spamming damage. If these blooms get low, please refresh them. That is the most important hot that you do keep up. This kind of goes for my aggro druid playstyle in general. Life bloom is super, super important to keep up. You need to make sure you're having that up because that is your best heal. And if you do need to emergency heal after that, having life bloom because of the triple mastery talent is going to be your best thing. You don't want to have to. You don't want to have to uh, life loom and then swift man and then rejuve and then swift man and then regrowth ns so make sure you just keep up your life looms at a minimum okay if your targets are taking more damage throw more hots on them also i gotta know, put this out there in moon conform there are a couple things you can do you can overgrowth you can regrowth so if you are in a very offensive moment and your life loom is about to fall i could be casting rats i could just overgrowth and refresh it I can go back, stick in that form, and keep doing damage, okay? Other than that, you can also throw in regrowths. If you want to just throw in a regrowth here and there, just to keep up your teammate in between. And then when the blooms are coming back down, you can shift back out and pop your life bloom, okay? So do note that you can overgrowth and you can wild growth, or uh, sorry, no, wild growth, regrowth while in Mooncut form. I'm trying to think of everything. Sunfire, don't press this button, okay? It costs way too much mana and it does not enough damage. Just to give you guys a comparison, look at Moonfire versus Sunfire. Moonfire, or er, Moonfire over here, is 750 mana for 80 or 9k initial, 88k damage over time. Sunfire, for some reason, is 4,500 mana and it does half the damage. Why? I don't know, man. It would be nice to have Sunfire to work, but it doesn't. Don't press this button. Don't put it on your bars. The only reason you take it is because you have to. All right. Got it? Cool. In 3v3, do not force the damage. Okay? 3v3, just keep up your Moonfires. If you see opportunities, you shift. Don't worry about the damage meters. The, the, the whole point of it is going to be clips like the beginning of this video. Is when you find opportunities, you have a CC on the healer. You have your lockdown or whatever is going on. You have an opportunity to cast and you're going to execute. I've gotten plenty of, actually quite a few solo shuffle kills uh, where I do no damage the whole game. Right at the last minute, I go moon conform. I throw in a couple star fires. I win the game. So find your opportunities to achieve victory and execute on them. All right. Well, that's all I got. I appreciate you guys. If you have questions, please leave a comment down below. Hopefully you learned something. From this, I would be surprised if you didn't learn something from this. And thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.